Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to our monthly penny webinar. This month's topic, uh, we will be covering management fees. If this is your first time joining us, let me tell you a little bit about our format. Uh, since there are a lot of people on the webinar, I ask, um, I have everyone on mute. If you do have a question at any time, I ask that you email uh, the question to our crc at pennyatworks.com email. At the end of the session, I'll take a look and see what's come in. Um, if I don't get to your question today, uh, uh, have no worries. I'll follow up with you later this afternoon. So today we're going to be covering management fees. Uh, Penny has the ability to do uh, a whole variety of different management fee calculations. What we're going to do on this webinar today is we're going to go through the setup screen and I'm going to explain all the various different options. Uh, we're going to go over some of the reports specific to the management fees and then I'm going to show you some of the additional functionality related to management fees as well. So let's start. Management fees, uh, what are they? Well, management fees are the capital-based fees uh, that are charged directly to the investor. Um, while there are numerous settings in the system, the actual formula behind it is very straightforward. The fee amount is the investor's capital base times the fee percent times the day count. Now, the flexibility comes in determining what is that base, what is that fee percent, and what is that day count. So we're going to hop in. You'll see the management fees are located under Fund Fees. There's an entire folder where all the functionality related to management fees resides. So here is a sample straightforward 2% management fee. It's always nice to start simple. So the first area I'm going to start is the fee base and what the various selections are. So the first one is actual base. This is where you choose what value is used as the basis for the fee calc. You have a couple options. You have capital, which is your uh, gross capital, cost, your original contribution or cost for the investor. For private equity funds, you have commitment, um, and net. Notice that when net, if you do choose net, a uh, additional tab appears at the top for options where you can define what net is, whether it includes management or incentive fees. You also have the reset. Again, you have a variety of options, close, month, quarter, semi, uh, annually, and year. Uh, normally it's set to close, meaning that the opening capital for the period is used. Um, if the reset is set to any value other than the close, uh, there is an effect on the fee base. Um, in these circumstances, the opening capital that is used is dependent upon the charge periods. So if you reset quarterly, then you're talking uh, January 1st, April 1st, July 1st, October 1st. Um, Semi-annually is you know January and July 1st. And annually would just be looking at January 1st. The day count, you also have a variety of options. You have your standard 30 over 360, and you actually have um, ways of drilling down to be even more precise. You have actual over 365 um, and a couple other ones. I will say the help file for the management fees, um, it is uh, quite long, but it does include examples of all these day counts um, and a lot of what I'm going to discuss today. So I would definitely check out the help file as well if you're looking for specific examples um, of these calculations. You have currency. Normally, you can calculate the whatever the fund base is, but you do have other options. Um, and the currencies listed here are what you have set up in your system. So whatever currency you need, you would just set up under the GL tab, and then it would appear as a, a drop-down. Include P&L. Um, this is a simple yes or no question. Uh, whether um, It basically comes down to whether you're going to use opening capital or ending capital. So are you going to include the P&L for the period or not? And time frame. This is um, this is an additional setting that determines how to count the number of days that has elapsed. So in most cases, it will be the same. So in this straightforward example, I reset on the close time frame close, and you can charge on the close as well. 
So in this charge section, you have two options when you charge the fee. So you can choose close, which is any time you close in penny, monthly, quarterly, semi, or yearly. You also have the ability to charge uh, in each uh, group. So there is a lot of group functionality with management fees and the ability to um, choose which group you would like to charge in. And down here is where you enter the rate. So this is a nice straightforward 2% rate. You would just put it in as two, you don't have to put in percent, you don't have to put 0 0.02, it's just the number uh, that the percent is, so 2%. Now, this is simple and straightforward. Let's go into something a little more complex. So if you have tiers, uh, you define your tiers within the rate section, defining what your lower and upper boundaries are and the percent. So in this case, this management fee uh, the more capital you have in the fund, the lower the rate. Now, with tiers comes even more options. Over here, you have the rate base. And this section here is specific to fees that have tiers. So the, this management fee, we have flexibility in what value is used to determine the fee. So you can do it uh, contribution, uh, investment, investor, or you can do it by consolidation. You also can choose the rate basis. In many cases, it's the same, and that's what the defaults are. Um, but here's where you can choose the amount that's used to determine the rate. So same would be the amount used for calculating the fee, uh, or you could have cost, or you could have capital. You also have the ability to use an investor consolidation. So let's say you had three investors in the fund that were separate investors but um, were considered a, a family or related somehow that their management fee should be dependent upon their combined uh, capital balance. If you set up an investor consolidation by checking this box, you have the ability to pool together uh, those investors' capital. When this box is checked, note that the management fee will combine all the investors that are grouped within this consolidation for the purposes of determining what rate to use. But note that while the fees are calculated by taking the investor's base times the rate, the allocation of the fees across the investors within a consolidation will be done on the investor's opening capital for the period. And if that, as if that weren't enough options, we have even a couple more. Additional options here at the top, you can choose your rate type. So for multi-tiered funds, you can choose whether the rate on the highest tier should be used, which would be single, as opposed to a weighted average combination of the rates from all the tiers, which would be incremental. And you also have the ability to choose the base option. This is uh, when the base reset is for a time period longer than the break period. Uh, for example, if you had it quarterly, you can choose whether the base is calculated using a simple average or a day-weighted average. And finally, we have our default accounts, payable and expense. And by defining what account and sub-account to use, this is when the system uh, accrues and charges the fees, uh, what the journal entries are going to hit on the general ledger. So you can choose your account and sub-account choices. Now you'll notice too we have a couple extra tabs. We have a group options tab. This is uh, you know separate for when you have uh, groups for your fund uh, and this is when you can where you can actually specify an, an alternative rate for a specific group. Uh, this comes in handy if for example you have a pool of capital that receives a different fee. For example a liquid side pocket or illiquid side pocket versus a main account. Now, I've gone through a lot, and I have mentioned the help file, if you hit F1, contains a lot of information about uh, all the different options that I've gone over. And I would definitely recommend taking a look at it. Um, there are specific examples and charts and, and examples using um, numbers. But one of the nice things about our management fee, if you go to set up a brand new management fee, 
we have what's called our wizard. And what the wizard does is it helps guide you through the setup by giving you the information instead of having to dig through the help file for it right here at your fingertips. So if you use the wizard, you would put in your code. I'm just going to be simple and say test. And here there are five different tabs, and it steps you through all the different uh, setup options. So the first tab is base. So here are all your options related to base, and here are excerpts from the help file to help you um, know what to choose. So again, the wizard comes in very handy. Um, so for example, day factor, day count, here's something from the help file that gives you a little more information. Again, when charged, if you're not sure what to choose, here's some information that might help you. And so by using the wizard, you can hit save, and it's a way of uh, stepping you through the management fee setup. So once you have your met management fee set up, now what? Like any other fee, it's through the investor role that the fee combinations are set up. So let's hop into investor roles. So through the investor role is where you choose your management fee. And all the management fees you have set up are here. And you have an additional option. Charge fees on partial withdrawals. So if you have a management fee set up, uh, let's say quarterly, and you have a mid-quarter withdrawal, do you want the system to crystallize the accrued piece of that fee? So it's a simple yes or no, uh, but the option is available here on the investor role. So this really isn't an issue for fees that charge on the close uh, or charge monthly, but it's a great option if you have uh, management fees that go out quarterly or longer. Back into our management fee section, you notice we have some uh, additional functionality. You do have the ability at any time to override the management fee. So what this does is it allows you to replace the management fee calculated by Penny with your own value. I have an example set up here. So you have your fund and your period. Note that the beginning of the period needs to be processed, uh, but the ending should be open. Now, each investor's fee can be overridden. Uh, both partners and shareholders are shown. You can also filter um, on investor code, uh, name, role, series, or, or group. And there's a variety of um, options to override. So in this case, I'm overriding the charge. So the number I'm putting in here, instead of what the system is going to calculate, it's just going to override it with a charge of $100. You can also override the, um, the base um, and also put in an adjustment. So there's a lot of options uh, in the actual override section. We also have the management fee period override. Now this is uh, looking at the management fee more as a whole and not by investor. It allows you to um, change the fee base again, for the entire fund. Um, and it also allows you to override the days in the period. Where this comes in handy is, let's say you have a, a quarterly management fee that you want charged all in the first month. You can actually change the number of days for the first period to be 90, and then the second and third month to be zero, and that forces the uh, entire quarter into the first month. So again, just additional ways to override that fee. We also have, similar to the incentive fees, a management fee exclude. And what this does is it gives you the ability to exclude certain pieces of P&L by indicating either through an account or sub-account combination uh, from the actual management fee calculation. So to set this up, you just choose the account and sub-account you want excluded. Um, as with most things, you can leave it uh, just account or just sub-account or a combination of both. So we're going to take a look at some of the reporting. The main report is the management fee calc report. 
and I'm going to bring this up. This report shows you all the details behind the management fee calculation. So it is by investor. It's going to give you your opening capital, P&L, the base used. So in this case, my base is including P&L. The fee calculated, any prior accrued charge, uh, adjustments, your fee effective, uh, fee accrued and fee charge. So in this case, I have my fee set to charge on the close, so it is charging off the fee. We also have some additional reporting. Uh, the management fee audit report has uh, four different reports available. And this gets um, much more specific to your incentive fee setup. Um, you know, for example, the capital base report, uh, this is for when you have um, a management fee base uh, that is a derived average. So that's common when a fee accrues across several periods, for instance, when the fee is charged quarterly but periods are done on a monthly basis. Uh, this report will show the capital balance obtained from the capital records plus any adjustments that needed to be made. You also have um, the fee rate report, FX translation report. This is for specific to um, management fees that are set with a currency other than the base of the fund. Uh, a crystallized fee on withdrawal report. Uh, this one, for example, if you have a management fee uh, that is quarterly, and let's say you have a mid-quarter redemption, when I went to the investor rules to show you the drop-down yes or no whether to charge fees, if you are crystallizing fees, this gives you the breakdown of exactly what was charged. So again, the management fee audit reports with the various uh, different types are used um, more for specific fees, but we like to give you all the information um, behind all of our calculations. So at this time, I'm just going to take a look and see if any questions have come in. So bear with me for one second. Okay. We have one question that came in, um, and it was asking, uh, if you put in an override, is there a way to tell um, if an override was entered? Um, so yes, there is. I'm going to go back to the management fee calc report. So I had entered to show a management fee override. I had put in a charge of $100 here for LP number one for March. If you look at the management fee calc report, here's that investor LP number one. The fee charge, you'll see the fee calculated is $861. The fee charge is 100 That's my override, and there's an X next to it. So anytime you see the X, that means that the fee was overridden. Um, another way to tell just overrides in general is we have a um, report specific to overrides. Under fund utilities, we have a report called overrides. So I'll choose this fund as an example because I know there's an override in. What this report shows is any overrides entered into the system. So here it'll show me I have a management fee override, the investor, the type of override, and the amount. Now this report you can filter by override type, so you could filter by management fee, or you could leave it blank and it will show uh, all the overrides uh, for that fund. So that concludes our monthly webinar. Uh, again, if you do have any additional questions that you think of later, feel free to reach out to us at crc at pennyatworks.com. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you at our next webinar. Thank you so much.